Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer now located in Fort Worth, Texas. And today we are going to be talking about natural horsemanship. I hope this is the first of a few different videos that I'll be doing because I do want to talk about this very broad category of training that we call natural horsemanship and just kind of give you some of my opinions on it. Today, specifically, we're talking about the danger of using tools. Now, some people jokingly asked, was I going to talk about specific trainers that they thought were tools? And I'm not. I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus. So if you follow natural horsemanship trainers, I'm not. That's, that's a good thing. But let's make sure that no matter what trainer we follow, we're being somewhat critical of their work and I want you to apply the same principle to what I do as well and to judge the trainers not by necessarily what they say or not even necessarily by how their horses perform but by how your horses do when you apply those techniques. So we're going to be talking about that so feel free to jump on and uh, ask any questions you have and let me know what you're thinking. And we already have Nan and Jack from Maryland. Hey, I do hope that I get to see you guys again one day because it was a lot of fun working with you guys in Pennsylvania. Before I get started, really quickly, just for fun, so I had asked folks to send me magnets for my refrigerator. So I just got married and I have zero magnets for my refrigerator and I asked folks just if they could send me one that would be really cool and so so far I think I've gotten two I've got two packages that I think could be magnets and I'm going to open them really quickly and show you guys um okay so this one okay so it's from Saddle Mountain Souvenir uh in West Virginia so uh, I don't actually know who it's from because there is no note but this magnet is from Indiana. I have been to Indiana many times. So this is from Indiana. It says the Hoosier State. So I don't know if you guys can see that right there. So really cool. So magnet for my fridge. So again, if you're interested, I'll put the address in the comments in the description if you want to send me just a magnet um, so that I have ways to put stuff in my fridge because I don't. And... Then, this other one, actually, I did recognize the return address. It's from my Aunt Sharon in South Dakota. So she got me one that's Black Hills, and it says Badlands on it. And it shows Devil's Tower and Sturgis and Pronghorn Sheep and Bison. So I, that might be a little bit of glare. So I'm going to try to get rid of the glare for you guys. There you go. So anyway, thank you, Aunt Sharon. And whoever sent me the Indiana one... I've got two to start my collection now, so send me them and I will show them on the live video so that everybody can see. And I'm hoping to get some very fun ones. Okay, so natural horsemanship. There are some really great articles out there about it and natural horsemanship has done good in the way that it has transformed how we treat horses and animals in general. One of the issues that we may come across is the thing is natural horsemanship works it it really does it uses what we call in the quadrant of training uh negative reinforcement now what that means is we want the horse to continue doing something and we take away the bad thing uh take away the thing they don't like that's the negative part take away and they will do it again because they want to get rid of that pressure and it works all animals and people learn by negative reinforcement, but it's just a one quadrant of the learning uh, circle, which is uh, negative reinforcement, positive reinforcement, positive punishment, and uh, and negative I mean, negative reinforcement, positive reinforcement, negative punishment, positive punishment. Those are the different ones. And specifically today, I'm talking about the danger of tools. So there's an analogy probably most of you have heard that if all you have is a hammer. Every problem looks like a nail. So when all you, with the only tool you have is a hammer, everything is going to include banging. <laughs> You're going to bang on everything. Screws are going to get banged on everything because you don't have any other tools in your arsenal to fix problems. So, and I'm kind of applying that in very broad strokes to natural horsemanship and tools that we use. The thing is, 
like I said, natural horsemanship and negative reinforcement works. So you may be asking, Ivy, why do we, why does it even matter to try to change anything we're doing because it works? <clears throat> well, it works to get horses to do what you want, but you always have to use pressure. So you you always are following up with the horse with the threat of pressure. He's always you're always gonna have to have the whip or the spurs or use leg pressure or a light touch. But what if it could be better? What if it could be lighter? What if your horse would want to have a different kind of a relationship with you? And that's the question right there. And only you can answer that. What kind of a relationship do you want to have with your horse? Do you want it to be based on actual trust and the horse's willingness to do it? And not just because you're in a small area and you have a whip in your hand. All right, so what I want to talk about, uh, first I want to say hi to everybody. So hi, Nancy from Vancouver Island, California, or Canada. Kelly from Arizona. Uh, hi, Tanya. Monica from Colorado. Michelle from Tennessee. And Joan. Uh, Carolyn says, hi, Ivy, glad to see you're back at it. I am. This will be the last one for this week, I think, because my parents are visiting, but next week. Uh, Diana, Mary from Colorado, and Joan from Missouri. Great to have everybody on here today. So the, and Lynn from Middle Tennessee. The thing is, the question I always want to ask is, can it be better? Can it be softer? Can it be lighter? Can the horse like it more? And that's my goal. As a Christian, I would always, and growing up, you know, always want that perfect relationship with the horse. But um, we live in a fallen world where that relationship is not perfect. And I always wonder what would it have been like if we hadn't sinned, if Adam hadn't sinned and we hadn't lived in a cursed world, what would that relationship with horses look like? And how close on earth here can we get and achieving it? So I'm always looking for a, a more gentle way, a way that my horses want to be with me. For example, my horses just moved to Texas. The four of them have bonded and they're, they've only been here for like three days. And so they're pretty buddy sour already. So the four of them are in a paddock. I take them to the arena, which is literally 40 feet away. They can see each other. And no matter which horse I take out, that one just goes nuts wanting to be with the other horses. Well, you have a lot of options. How do you get that horse to pay attention to you? If, again, I'm not picking any one technique, a lot of natural horsemanship trainers would say, move their feet, make them work, get them sweaty, and then when they pay attention to you, let them stop and stand. Well, that is the definition of negative reinforcement. And again, it can work, but how long does it take to get a gated horse to stop running around and pay attention? It can take a long time. They have a ton of stamina and are built for moving around and going fast. So that may not uh, be the best way. Okay, it can work, right? Again, I'm not dissing anybody that's following it or any trainer that's doing it, but I've seen a lot of trainers take horses that were looking every direction, looking around the arena, screaming for their buddies, and they have to keep escalating that pressure, whatever pressure they're using, whether it's a rope or a stick or a whip, and they have to keep escalating before the horse finally pays attention. But then you get into something that we call, uh, it's uh, learned helplessness, where no matter what the horse does, he can't get out of this bad situation, the situation he doesn't like, and they shut down. Now, not every trainer does this, but a lot of them do it. And learned helplessness is something that I want to avoid. So let's go back to this mare. So I have my mare and I let her loose and she's running the fence on the side closest to the horses. Literally, they're 40 feet away. She can see and hear them and smell them, but she's still running back and forth. What do I do? Well, initially, uh, I would, every time she would uh, settle down uh, and face me, I would click and give a treat because she's done a little bit of clicker training. And today I included target training with that. And you saw her go from a horse that was racing back and forth to a horse that was following me. And it probably did take 20 minutes. I will say it did take like 20 minutes, but it, she wasn't running around as much. And then she was just following me and curious as to whatever I wanted to do. And then when I started doing a little bit of lunging, I had a very, very calm, relaxed horse to start with at the beginning. And so what I did is I eliminated, or I tried to eliminate that period where the horse was stressed or where I was pushing the horse. And that is kind of my goal is to help the horse get to a place where they're they're comfortable 
the problem with the tools is if you have a whip and a rope and that's all you have or a stick, then your only solution, what do you do when the horse looks away? Well, you don't have a lot of options. You can hit the horse, you can hit the ground, you can wave the whip in the air, you can shake the lead rope, you can hit the horse with the lead rope, you can jerk the lead rope. All of those things are options. And the question is, do they work? Is it the right thing for your horse, right solution for, for your horse, for any horse in that particular situation? But if all you know to use is pressure from your body, your finger, your eyes, your whip, your rope, your halter, if that's all you can do, those are the only things that you will do. But what if you could use food? Or what if you could use scratches? Or what if you could get the horse to pay attention to you without running his feet around? What then? So I'm a big advocate of clicker training and positive reinforcement. If you don't want to do it, that's okay. I will never push anybody to do it if they're not comfortable. But there is so much that can be learned by using all of the different training techniques and not just using your whip and your rope. My horse, Jackson, does Liberty really well. And he can do Liberty better when I use a whip, but you know what? His whole demeanor changes when he knows I have the whip, even though I hardly ever touch him with it. He, he changes, he swishes his tail a lot more. And so I've made a lot of effort to try to not just use the whip, to try to have different ways to help him do what I want. And so that he wants to do it as well. And it's not the fact that there's escalating pressure. And that's the problem is when you have, when you use your whip and your rope, if your horse isn't listening the first time you ask, the only thing that you know how to do is to escalate and increase the pressure. And that's what I want to avoid doing in every situation. Now, there are times to be safe. You could absolutely use pressure. I want everybody to stay safe. I'm not saying you never hit the horse. I also have, have hit my horses and I need to stay safe and I want you to stay safe. So believe me on that one. But let's try other techniques. There's other things. There's feel and release. There's clicker training and positive reinforcement. And you can do a lot of that with scratches. I did a lot of training with my yearling using clicker, but I would scratch her. No food involved. Uh, uh, so we have Pamela from Memphis, Tennessee and Baron and hi, Steph. And Jacqueline, first time watching from Nebraska. Hey, thanks for joining. And Nancy says, with your mare, would you maybe take all four to the arena and work with one horse, gradually change to three, then two, etc.? That is totally fine to do. Uh, and I'm probably actually going to start working with two at a time in the arena for my Liberty work. Um, specifically, I did want to get her used to being away from her buddies because I'm trying to sell her. And she's doing really well, but I wanted her to think that people are more important than horses. So I was specifically training her you absolutely could bring all of them in the arena and work them. I trust my horses and I could totally do that. And it's totally fine. Uh, Jones says it's you every time you go out to the pasture. I'm not sure which that is, but good. <laughs> uh, so the thing I want people to be aware of, and there's nothing wrong with using whips and ropes, although I've eliminated a lot of the ropes and whips that I use, is that it, be aware that when you're using a whip and a stick or a rope, when the horse isn't doing what you want, a lot of times your only option is to apply more stick and rope. But what if you start releasing the rope? What if you start using praise? What if you start rewarding? There's a, one of the posts I shared today was that the way we work with horses with natural horsemanship tends to be looking for ways that the horse isn't listening. So let's say you're leading your horse from one pasture to the next and he gets too close. Some natural horsemanship trainers ask you to swing that rope or make him back up twice as far. And then you walk off and then the horse gets too close and you back him up again. Well, every time you do that, all you're doing is punishing the horse for a behavior. All you're doing is saying to the horse, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And eventually he's like, he just gives up. He never knows what the right thing is. And think about it. How is he supposed to know where you want him to be next to you and not to run over you? Horses aren't born with that sense of giving people space. They need to be trained. And all you're doing with natural horsemanship at times is saying, no, 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 no. It's something I learned with dogs. 
saying no doesn't get you anything. It doesn't give any new information. And backing a horse up because he got too close doesn't give him any new information other than you're scary and I don't like to be with you because you all of a sudden swing around and wave stuff at me. Okay? We need to be able to tell the horse when they did the right thing. And there's different ways to do it. You can use food. You can use scratches. You can use rest. A lot of what I teach is stop and praise. Uh, I took a video of me working with the mare that I mentioned a little bit earlier. Worked with the mare and I started doing some very, very slow lunging because people are asking me to do some videos on how I would train the gait from the ground. So I started and I did use food, but you could also just do stop and praise as well. So I'm starting to teach her just to walk off, to put her head down, and then to speed up in gait, but do it slowly and calmly. And we never want to be telling the horse they got the wrong answer, so I don't want to be shaking the rope or pulling on it or doing anything that makes the horse think they got the wrong answer, but when they do have the right answer, I want to stop and praise. Hi, Angie from Oklahoma. Thanks for joining us. So I, I want you to not go out and suddenly change everything you do with your horse, but I want you to be thinking about the tools you're using. And is there a better way? Are there different tools? How can you let your horse know they did the right thing? That's the biggest thing. How does your horse know when they've done the right thing, whether it's leading, cantering, stopping and backing up, gating, standing to mount, moving over to mount, uh, standing politely to be have a saddle put on and brushed? Think about how you can let the horse know they've done the right thing rather than the wrong thing, rather than punishing them, rather than just saying no, which doesn't give any new information. One of the things that you'll see a lot of times when people lunge horses is they, whenever the horse looks to the outside of the circle, which happens a lot when they're distracted, they pull on the rope or jerk on it or, or do something to get the horse's attention back. And most of the time, it's not very effective. I mean, I had someone comment on my video. They said they have a mare that constantly fights them. Their words, not mine. And no matter what they do, it gets more and more of a fight. And it gets worse and worse, and the mare gets more and more stubborn. Well, I've never seen the mare, and I don't know what they were working on. But obviously, whatever they were doing wasn't working. So they really, honestly, the best thing to do, try something else. Try anything else. Try something you haven't tried before. I think uh, I think it was John Lyons, but it could have been somebody else. They Maybe it was just an article I read. They Someone went to a trainer and said, I can't catch my horse. I have tried everything. You wouldn't believe it. I've tried absolutely everything to catch my horse and nothing works. And the trainer says, well, have you tried laying down in the pasture? And the owner says, um, actually, no, haven't tried that. Sometimes you think you've tried everything, but until you know about another tool or another technique, you never actually try everything. So think about the things that you haven't tried. Uh, think about where you're struggling and see if you can just change something. Figure out how to tell the horse he did the right thing. Even the littlest try, but figure out how to tell him he did the right thing. Karen says, how would you slow a horse down when you're walking next to them and they keep walking ahead? How would you handle that with praise, but still correct it? Uh, I'm gonna give you two options, Karen. That's a great question. I love that question. I'm gonna give you two options. One is the not as much reinforcing, and then one is more reinforcing, um, but both work. And actually this, the first one is effective with dogs too. So if you have a dog that doesn't want to stay next to you or always goes ahead and pulls, this technique works great too. So you're going to be leading your horse. Do it where you have a little bit of room around you. Uh, you can be do it in the pasture. It doesn't really matter. Do it wherever they try to walk ahead. So you're going to walk and you're going to hold the lead rope kind of loose. I usually leave two to three feet of slack where they can't step on it, but I, I'm not holding it. Um, at the halter, at the knot or the base of the lead rope. And I walk. If the horse, and I'm, this, is the first, this is the part where you just do the, the negative reinforcement kind of thing. When they walk in front of you, you're going to turn 180 degrees. You're going to plant the lead rope right here. And you're going to turn and you're going to walk off calling your horse. Come on, whatever his name is, call him, ask him to come. And if he catches up with you, you're going to stop. Uh, and, and he walks next to you a couple steps, stop and pet him. And you're gonna do that. If he walks in front of you again, turn 180 degrees, like an about face, like you're in the military, 180 degrees, turn and walk off. <clears throat> you do that, say 10, 20 times, and the horse starts going like, I have no idea when she's gonna turn. 
I need to be careful here. And they start just staying back a little bit and watching you. Okay, that's more than negative reinforcement. Now, I would encourage you to combine that with um, when the horse does walk nicely next to you for a step or two and doesn't go in front, stop right there, let the horse eat some grass, give it a treat, scratch the horse, or if nothing else, gently put your hand on it and just go, Those things make a difference. Stop and take a breath. It's another way to let the horse know they did the right thing. And you can just stand there and breathe. Okay. Now, if you were to use only positive reinforcement, I would, when the horse walks next to you, before he takes that step in front of you, click and give a treat and then walk off, and before he gets in front of you, click and give a treat. And same thing, you can include some turns, but as soon as he stays with you, click and give a treat. You honestly never, you never have to punish the horse. Like you said in your question, how do we correct it? But correct it implies that the horse was doing something wrong. The horse was doing what he thought was the right thing. He was doing what he thought worked, okay? So we need to change his mind. We need to make him think that this this other thing, walking next to us, is the best thing in the world. Not correcting the bad behavior, but giving him a new behavior. I hope that makes sense and it gives you a couple different uh, ideas. Generally, my horses will lead really well. Currently, the yearling, she's leading from behind right now, and so I'll be working to get her to come up, which sometimes takes more work, but I think it's usually easier to get a horse to come back to you that wants to walk in front. Mallory says, my horse is moving when I'm trying to mount her. I want to start working with it on it and using treats for her to stand still. How would I say she's doing wrong when she starts to move when I mount? Mallory, great question again. And again, it shows how focused we are on correcting the wrong behavior. So your horse moves off when you try to mount. Is that wrong? That's a serious question. Is it wrong? Horses are trained to move forward. They're born moving forward, basically. So is your horse walking forward actually doing the wrong thing? Not really. Your horse just doesn't know that you don't want them to walk off right that instant. So don't think about correcting the wrong move. Think about praising standing still. So we get into what's called a rate of reinforcement. So if your horse is standing at the mounting block, you want to start giving them treats like there's no tomorrow. And when they stand there and don't move their feet, you click and treat and 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 give them a little break because they're still chewing and then click and treat and give another treat and another treat and another treat get down and go to them give a treat put your foot in the stirrup now they're still chewing get down give them a treat put your foot in the stirrup get down give them a treat put your foot in the stirrup get down give them a treat put your foot in the stirrup get down most of the time i can tell you this horses will not move they won't actually do the wrong thing you're rewarding them for doing exactly what you want, which is standing still. So try not to think about correcting wrong things because that's very difficult. Now, I say that there is a sense where if safety is involved, I will correct them. I will use pressure. I will stop the horse from running into the highway. I will stop them from running into a fence. I will correct them if I'm in danger. But when I'm training something like teaching a horse to walk next to me, teaching a horse to stand still for mounting, teaching a horse to gate, I'm not trying to correct the wrong behavior, especially if I don't have a way to reward the good behavior. So there is a little bit of a, a caveat. When I'm training a horse to gait, if they're pacing, I do want to change it. So I'll ask for head down, which is not like saying you're doing it wrong. I'm giving the horse new information. I'm saying change how your body moves by putting your head down. When you put your head down and when you change how you move, I will stop and praise but I didn't just correct it like jerk on their mouth or make them back up or give them no new information. I was looking for ways that I could improve how they moved. Um, Chrissy says, thanks so much for this because now I know that when I'm in competition, my horse is not wanting to stand still. Unlike her usual, I just need to reinforce her training with treats. Go for it. I've talked to a bunch of people in this last year who do uh, you know, competitive trail riding, whether no matter which one it is, Chrissy, and they've told me you can use food in a lot of the exercises you do and the training. And I know that the biggest deterrent with using food is often that people are waiting, like using obstacles, because I've had some people say their horses rush through obstacles. 
And I say, you just need to slow it down during an actual obstacle. You feed one or two treats, stop and let the horse rest. And as long as there isn't a big long line behind you, you'll get more points is my understanding for having your horse do it slowly. If I'm wrong, go ahead and correct me. But my understanding is you can use food for some of that. Um, and it could be slightly discouraged, but if you don't lose points for it, it will also set an example for everybody else to see that they can slow down and praise their horse instead of correcting it. We probably have all seen someone who's having a bad ride or their horse is acting up and their solution is to hit it. Now, I have to admit when horses have acted up under saddle and not just because they're upset or afraid, but they're really acting up, I have gotten after a horse and I will whack them on the neck, but that's a last resort. That is to get them out of whatever behavior they're doing right this instant. But that's usually because I don't have the tools to correct that horse or to change the horse's behavior yet, or I'm on a tight schedule. That is never my goal, but sometimes it does happen, and I'm working to change it so that I never have to do that. Brian from Indiana, when you're doing any kind of training and the horse becomes pushy with getting treats, how would you continue to train but correct behavior becoming pushy? So it's not correcting the behavior, it's training a new behavior. So I have a couple of free training videos on that. And I'll put the links in the description on how to work with horses that are getting muggy. And if you want to find the complete videos of that, that is on my private training group, which you can join for $99. It's a one-time fee. You're in for life. But I do have some free training videos. I'll put those links in the description so you guys can watch those because it is a very valuable tool. Remember, the goal is not to correct the horse from being nippy. The goal is to give it a new behavior, a what's called a mutually exclusive behavior. So in this case, Let's say your horse is reaches around to try to get food. We want to train a mutually exclusive behavior, which means they can't reach around if they're doing this other behavior. That other behavior is for the horse to put his head straight out in front, not, to, not the other way, but straight in front, and wait for us to bring the food to him. Train that behavior, and the problem of horses biting and taking the food away from you and mugging you goes away. Don't believe me? I have so many client testimonials that have used this technique, had horses that were incredibly muggy and their horses were suddenly fixed. People couldn't believe it in the barn that this horse that used to mug people, anybody in the pasture, now is polite about treats. So I'll share that in the link in the description. Chrissy says, they don't discourage treats uh, in the competitive trail, just that I usually save the treats for a metabolic check. Uh, I need to stop doing that. She's impatient. Wants to be the first and fastest. Yep, she's she's the goer, and that's really cool that she wants to uh, perform for you. But use treats, slow things down. Uh, it'll help your obstacles be more correct as well. In my opinion, and the things I've read about judging and scoring, the more correct it is, the better, even if it's slow. If you have control of your horse's feet, but take a little bit more time, you'll always get higher marks than rushing through it and messing up. Liz says. Is it appropriate to use a treat after haltering in the pasture? My mare used to be great, but she was moved in with a new horse at a boarding facility. Now she doesn't want to be haltered. She does come though. So you, it, using a treat is totally appropriate. And don't just think about using one. You want your horse to like it when you come and like it when you have the halter. And usually I am very liberal with treats. I want horses to like working with me, especially when they're learning something new or there's a new criteria. It's windy out, there's distractions. So we're at a new barn and there are dogs on either side of where I'm working that are barking a lot. And that is new. Now my horses are used to dogs being around, but my dog, the dogs that are around are not barking constantly. So they're distracted. So whenever I'm training anything, even that it's something they already know because it's different criteria, I start feeding lots of treats because whenever they're paying attention and working for me, I want to reward that, especially with the distractions. Uh, and Chrissy says, definitely, you get more points for doing it slowly and correctly than rushing and making mistakes. Tina Marie says, gelding loads great when other horse is already in. How do I use treats to get him to load nicely when being alone, when going alone? Great question. Um, this is not a trailer loading video. I would recommend you look up target training for horses and and teach a horse to go to the target and follow the target really, really well, and then incorporate that with loading. I'm gonna be doing some of that with my yearling and hopefully videoing that process because she'll kind of load with a little bit of help when her mom is on, but I need her to be able to load 
without pressure onto the trailer by herself. And I'll be working on that this winter, hopefully. Tanya says, what if my gelding is very aroused when getting treats like a stallion? That's a great question. So Tanya, the trick is you're probably using treats that have what's called, it's too high value. So you want to back the value up. What I started using when the horses liked the drain too much is I was using chopped hay. And like it comes in a big plastic uh, wrap. I don't know. It's like this big. I don't know. And it's chopped hay. And so it's really good hay, but it's in little pieces. And usually what will happen is uh, the horse will love sweet feed or pelleted feed or oats. So you start backing off the value. So it's not as valuable to the horse or like flakes of alfalfa dust things like that, where the horse still really likes it, but doesn't like it as much as the treats or the grain. You can also try feeding just whole oats rather than a sweet feed. That can help. That's actually one of the best ways if you have a horse that gets into it too much is back the value up. And if your horse starts turning their nose up at the treats, one, feed more or try a higher value feed. Andy says, my horse is a cribber, so anything to do with his mouth, he goes overboard and gets pushy. So... That's just a training issue, whether he's a cripper or not. Sorry, that's me and my soapbox. A lot of people say, well, my horse just does this. And it's like, it's a training issue. It's a training issue. I Go ahead, ask me a question. Unless it's a pain issue, it's a training issue. Uh, he seems to do okay if I give praise rather than the treat. Any ideas how I could occasionally use treats? Well, Angie, I'm going to encourage you to watch my video uh, on how to use treats. Obviously, do it safely. Sometimes you can feed it in the pan if you can't feed it from your hand initially, but watch the videos. Again, the link will be in the description below on how to train horses to take food correctly and not be pushy. I had a horse that was so food sour, food motivated. Somebody had done this to him, not me. It wasn't my horse. He literally broke. I was using a fanny pack at the time for treats. He literally ripped it off of my waist because he was looking for the food so much in six days of training him to keep his head straight, he became so polite with food. He just became very gentle, very willing, and he was super pushy. All he could think about was food. I've taken very, I've taken so many horses that were so food motivated, and in usually one or two sessions, they start putting their head straight and not worrying about the food because you've trained a different behavior and you've given them the correct answer rather than hitting the horse or yelling at him or not using food, you've trained him how to do it nicely, which is giving him information. It's giving something that the horse can use. That's a really good question. We've had some really good questions about using food and treats on this session. And I'm gonna try to share a bunch of the videos that I've done on clicker training and continue to do more. Again, my name is Ivy Starnes. I'm now located in Fort Worth, Texas. I'll be doing training and lessons from here as well as clinics. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what other topics you'd like me to talk about. Thanks guys so much for watching and commenting and interacting. That's when it's most fun for me. Hope you guys have a great day and have a great ride.